What's going on guys? It's Greg here, aka New York Prepper. In this video, I'm going to be testing some 12 gauge slugs and I'm going to be testing the Brennick 2 and 3 quarter inch Special Forces Maximum Barrier Penetration Slugs. These slugs are 1 and 3 eighths ounce or 601 grains and they have an advertised muzzle velocity of 1650 feet per second and an advertised muzzle energy of 3545 foot pounds so this is a very powerful load and I'm gonna be shooting these slugs at some Douglas fir 2x12s that I've screwed together and we're gonna see how many Douglas fir 2x12s these maximum barrier penetration slugs from Brennick can penetrate through and we're going to compare the results of this test with other tests that I've done and we're going to see how this Brennick Special Forces maximum barrier penetration slug stacks up against other cartridges that I've tested. Now many people use Brennick slugs for bear defense so It'll be interesting to see how well these do against the 2x12s and how they compare to other bear defense ammunition or bear loads that I've tested in 2x12s such as the 10mm and 44 Magnum. Now these loads are marketed towards SWAT teams and special operations units and it is advertised to be able to penetrate through windshields, wheel rims, tires, car doors, and vehicle engines. And it is supposed to have an exceptionally hard alloy, so it's some type of a hard cast slug. So I'm going to be shooting this slug out of my Remington 870 with a cylinder bore and 18 and a half inch barrel from a distance of about 15 yards and we're gonna see how many 2x12s it can penetrate through and then we're gonna pull the slug out of the wood and we're gonna weigh it to see how much weight it retained and we're just gonna take a closer look at it to see if it deformed at all or if it retained its shape and then we're gonna compare it to a standard one ounce 12 gauge two and three quarter inch shotgun slug that I recently tested also against two by twelves and we're going to compare them to see the difference in how they look and how much they deformed so this is the first video in a series of videos that I plan to do with this particular slug the Brennick special forces maximum barrier penetration slug I have a variety of tests that I'm going to be doing with this slug, so stay tuned to my channel. Make sure you're subscribed and hit the bell notification icon to be notified when I upload new videos. So I will be working on these tests in the coming weeks. And of course you can check out my 12 gauge playlist where I have all of my 12 gauge videos. And you can also check out my penetration tests and ballistics tests playlist where I put all of my ballistics tests and penetration tests so I hope you guys enjoy the video and thanks for watching all right guys we got the Brennick two and three quarter inch one and three eighths ounce special forces maximum barrier penetration slug this is a hard alloy slug I'm guessing it's some kind of a hard cast we're gonna be shooting this out of my Remington 870 that I've heavily customized we're at a distance of about 10 yards or so let's see what happens here
All right, guys, welcome back to the New York Prepper Top Secret Ballistics Analysis Lab in rural Pennsylvania, a.k.a. my garage. And I want to share the results of the test with you. So the Special Forces Maximum Barrier Penetration Slug from Brennick only penetrated through two Douglas fir 2x12s, and that's only one more 2x12 than a standard one ounce soft lead two and three quarter inch slug. Now, I've done a test with standard shotgun slugs before, and I'll leave a link up above if you want to check that video. But I tested some federal two and three quarter inch one ounce slugs traveling at around 1,500 feet per second, and those slugs only penetrated through one 2x10. And here we have this maximum barrier penetration slug, which is marketed as being a harder alloy slug, only penetrating one more 2x12. So not very impressive penetration. I was disappointed. I was expecting it to penetrate at least three maybe four 2x12s, but only penetrating two 2x12s is not really that good. That's only three inches of wood, okay? So that's basically the same amount of penetration as my 10 millimeter 1911 with hollow points or my 44 Magnum snub nose with soft points or hollow points. My 44 Magnum snub nose revolver, which is the Smith & Wesson model 629 performance center with a 2 and 5 8 inch barrel, can penetrate through four Douglas fir 2 by 10 framing lumber with underwood ammo or buffalo bore 300 grain hard cast bear loads. So a 44 Magnum snub nose revolver with hard cast bear loads can penetrate double what this Brennick Special Forces Maximum Barrier Penetration Slug can penetrate. So that's pretty interesting, guys. The fact that a 12-gauge slug that's marketed as being a barrier penetration slug can only penetrate the same amount of wood as a 10 millimeter with soft point ammunition is that's just very surprising to me but this is why we do these tests to figure out exactly what your ammunition can do because if you don't do these tests you're not going to know what the ammunition can do so it's very important that any ammunition you plan to use to defend your life or somebody else's life you have to test it you have to go to the range and test the ammo make sure it does what it says it can do Okay, because a lot of companies, they make big promises, but they can't deliver on those promises. So go out there and test your ammo, but wanted to just share the results of this test with you guys. So once again, the Brennick Special Forces Maximum Barrier Penetration Slug, which is a two and three quarter inch, one and three eighths ounce slug with an advertised velocity of 1,600 feet per second and 3,500 foot-pounds, only penetrating through two Douglas fir 2x12s. That's about three inches of wood. So I want to go through these boards one by one and show you the damage that the slug did to the wood. And then afterwards, I'm going to weigh the slug. We're going to see what kind of weight retention we had with this slug and we're going to take a closer look at it to see if it retained its shape or if it deformed a lot so stay tuned all right guys so ignore these other holes these holes are from my 10 millimeter test that i filmed on the same day and i'm going to be uploading that video soon so stay tuned for that video so this is the first 2 by 12 and you can see a huge hole here, okay? And it actually split the wood, as you can see, which typically happens when you shoot slugs at wood, you get splitting, okay? Because it's such a massive amount of lead, it's a very large projectile. 
so it generally splits the wood. Okay, there's the exit hole from the first 2x12. So this is definitely very devastating against a two-legged predator. Any kind of shotgun slug is devastating against a two-legged predator, but against four-legged predators like bears, even this maximum barrier penetration slug would have less penetration than a 10 millimeter bear load, okay? So keep that in mind if you're gonna carry a slug in bear country, it's not gonna have good penetration and there's much better options out there. I would much prefer to carry a 10 millimeter semi-automatic with bear loads or even a 357 Magnum with bear loads than a 12 gauge slug just because a slug has difficulty penetrating very deep because it's a very large projectile. It has a very large diameter, okay? So you need a lot more velocity and power to drive that large diameter slug deep, okay? That's why slugs generally don't penetrate very well, but they do do a lot of damage on thin skin game, class two game like white-tailed deer or two-legged predators. They do very well on, but class three or class four game they don't do good at all so this is the first 2x12 here we have the second 2x12 the energy from the slug just completely split this 2x12 and you can see the wound channel there i mean just look at the size of that wound channel in the wood and this is wood okay imagine what this would do to human tissue or white-tailed deer all right this is my thumb and this is the entire wound channel here, okay? You're looking at, you know, two inches of displacement in wood, okay? So imagine what that would do to uh, living tissue. It would absolutely, the wound channel would be several inches, probably double the size. The tissue disruption would probably be four or five inches or more. So that's why slugs are just so devastating on thin skin game, class two game, and two-legged predators, but uh, that is just really impressive. Look at the size of that wound channel there. That is just insane. And here's the other side of the second 2x12. Okay, check that out. So impressive wound channel there in the second 2x12. Very, very impressive. It looks like it's about two inches. Very impressive. And then here we have the third board. It got stuck in the third board. Okay, you can see here this big hole, okay, it just got stuck like halfway through, all right, you can see there where it stopped inside of the third 2x12 about halfway in, okay, so I'm going to weigh this slug now, we're going to take a closer look, I'm going to show you guys what it looks like, and we're going to do a more detailed analysis, but that's basically how much penetration this Brennick two and three quarter inch, one and three eighths ounce special forces maximum barrier penetration slug can penetrate basically just two Douglas fir two by 12s, same amount as a 10 millimeter with soft points and a 44 Magnum snub nose with soft points. So a little bit disappointed, but I'm going to do some more testing with this slug. I plan to shoot some sheet metal and some other objects and I also just finished a test with sheetrock that I'll be editing and uploading soon so stay tuned to my channel for more tests with this slug and other shotgun slugs I'm going to be testing a variety of shotgun ammunition so stay tuned for that and if you want to browse through all of my shotgun ballistics tests check out my 12 gauge playlist and I'll leave a link to that up above so stay tuned and we're going to take a closer look at this slug and we're going to weigh it all right guys so now I'm going to give you a close-up look at the special forces maximum barrier penetration slug from Brennick after penetrating through two Douglas fir 2x12s and you can see it maintained its shape it didn't really deform much at all. So I'm actually very impressed by this slug in terms of its ability to maintain its shape. You can see it maintained that round nose 
So the nose didn't flatten out at all, which is really impressive. It smeared a little bit of its meat plat here. You can see some of the meat plat got smeared a little bit around the edges, okay? But pretty much that round nose maintained its shape. And if you guys ever shoot slugs, you'll notice that most slugs are either like a little hollow point or they're like a flat nose. And what makes this slug unique is that it has this round nose, which helps it to penetrate hard objects, much like a safari cartridge with round nose bullets. Same principle, those safari cartridges with round nose bullets are designed that way so they can penetrate through a lot of heavy bone tissue. And so pretty interesting slug, and I'm going to be doing more testing with it. So let's weigh this slug and see what kind of weight retention we got with it. So first thing I'm going to do is just zero out the scale, make sure that it's zeroed. And I got my 100 gram weight here. We're just going to zero it out. It says pass, that means it's good. So let's just double check. 100 grams basically. So now we'll switch back to grains. And we got 573.2 grains. So that's pretty good, guys. 573.4. All right, guys. So we only lost 28 grains. That's really good. That's 95% weight retention. That's much better than the one ounce standard slug that I tested that penetrated through one two by 10. So I just want to show you guys a side by side comparison between the Brennick Special Forces slug and a standard one ounce slug. So on the left here, this is just the standard one ounce two and three quarter inch slug. You can see the difference. This slug just completely lost its shape and flattened out into this random looking mass of lead and on the right you have the special forces slug and you can just see the huge difference so in my opinion this is an excellent slug for home defense or shtf much better than a soft lead slug just in case you have to shoot through a wall or shoot through a window or a car door or even just a wooden door i think this is the way to go and i'm going to be stockpiling more of this ammunition for my shtf shotgun ammo stockpile very very well designed slug and they did a great job with designing this alloy and mixing the proper ingredients so pretty interesting results guys and the recoil with this slug was not terrible, actually. And my Remington 870 probably weighs about six and a half pounds, so it's a fairly light shotgun. And the recoil was very manageable. You would think that a one and three eighths ounce slug going at 1600 feet per second and generating 3,500 foot pounds of energy would give you a good solid kick, but it really wasn't that bad. So I highly recommend this slug for home defense and SHTF. I think it's much better than a standard soft lead slug, okay? I mean, just look at the difference here, guys. Huge difference, okay? I'm going to be doing more tests with this slug. Let me know what you want to see. But that's it for now. So take care, God bless, and don't forget the three Ps. Prepare, practice, and persevere.